what do we have here? Beautiful Austin 16. That is brilliant. Ooh, it's coming in here. Look at that. Automobile 88. He's got some lovely cars, this guy, hasn't he? You can feel it through the ground as it drives past. What looms into view? Past this great little international harvester and the Fords and Power Major. Welcome to the old classic car channel. Today is the 26th of December 2023, Boxing Day. So I hope everyone had a fantastic Christmas. And I'm sure while most of you are having a nice lie-in, having a nice uh, bit of breakfast in bed, or maybe out in the sails, fighting over a cheap toaster, we are here in Lim today. For the first time since 2009, we've come over to the Jolly Thresher because today it is the Tom Barlow Gathering, a gathering of steam vehicles, classic cars, and usually a few classic commercials as well. So all being well, we'll be in for a great, great day. Like I say, last time we came was 2009, so this should be a very great day. Let's go and see what's going to turn up. The Chevrolet Corvair is the first classic car here today. Air-cooled, rear-engined Chevrolet. How cool is that? That's a convertible version. Some of those had quad carburettors even. I'm not sure if that's one of those. I think that was the, was that the Corsa or the Monza. I'm not too well up on my Corvairs, but that's a very cool car. Oh, what do we have here? Beautiful Austin 16 on white wall tyres. What a bobby dazzle that is. What a great way to start off this Boxing Day meet here in Lim. What a beauty that is. Looks very pre-war, but that is a post-war car. I think it's based loosely on pre-war mechanicals, but the Austin 16 was introduced in about 46 or 47, I think. Apologies for the diesel clatter of the modern cars that come past, but we'll ignore those and we'll concentrate on beautiful cars like that Austin. Will we get another glimpse of that beautiful front end? There we go. Wow, that's a cracker. Let's have a closer look at this fantastic Austin 16 while we wait for a few other cars to turn up. Yeah, lovely, lovely domed lamps on these, aren't they? Lovely dome lenses. Well, that's a beauty, that is, isn't it? Very similar in proportion and era to the V8 Pilot at home in many ways. So this would have been Austin's equivalent. I think the engine was slightly small, about 2.2 litre, I think these were, something like that. But yeah, what a, what a beautiful car and a great colour as well. Glistening chrome. What a cracking car this is. I'm not sure if it's 6 or 12 volt, to be honest. It's got a huge battery on it. That is a battery, isn't it? Oh, that's a lovely looking car. Let's have a quick look round the back. Uh, proper British classic there. And an American classic alongside it. What do we have here? Couple of hot rods, Ford based. Of 
course we've not had any really cold temperatures for a little while now so the roads haven't been gritted so we're really hoping for a great turnout of old cars and other vehicles here today the Dodge the Dodge Tradesman no less on an S plate that's pretty cool nice V8 burble to that one not seen that before that was another reason why I wanted to come here today because this will have this will be in a different catchment of classic cars, so we'll see some things that we haven't seen before, hopefully. There's the Gilburn coming into shot again. Hopefully he'll pull in. Wales is finest, of course. Nope. Just a flyby. First lorry of the day driving into view on this beautiful morning. How fantastic is that? What a treat. Nice shed on the back. That is brilliant. Ooh, it's coming in here. Look at that. Cropper's garage. And there's some proper living accommodation on the back of that one. And the old 20 plate on the back. There's a beautiful seat in there, look at that. So what year, what year is it? So 1957. 57, wow. Where did you find that? Uh, I, I bought it from um, a bloke in Nottingham called Craig. Uh, ah. It's originally from Nottingham, it's uh, an ex-Shipston's brewery folding. Is it? Um, oh. And then some years after that, Cropper's garage, mm. um, they took parts all over the country with it, you Did know, they? engine parts wow. and all sorts. So. That's a fantastic survivor. We've seen it elsewhere at, I don't know, Astle or somewhere. Yeah, or, yeah that's you know, right. Yeah, you know, go but, to all the um, steam yeah, shows. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's beautiful. Um, I think it's just lovely the fact that the old sign writing yeah, is well, still there. I, I love it, yeah, and you know, you just throw a diesel rag over it and it's not so bad, but yeah, no, it's, um, no, it's a Proper. Keep it as original yeah. as you can, really. That's it. They're only original ones, aren't they? Yeah, that's no. it. No, that's a beauty, that is. No, it's, a, it's a treat to see it. Thanks. Oh, thank <laughs> thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you just don't see many old lorries like that anymore. Obviously, a lot of them need to be restored when they get really, really bad. But when they're like this, just an oily rag and careful preservation is all they need. But that is just fantastic. Look at that! You can hear the distinctive rumble of a tractor, classic tractor time. Got a Massey Ferguson coming in. Oldsmobile 88. It's a great contingent of classic American cars here today as well. Cars and lorries, in fact. So there's that Dodge Tradesman we saw driving in before. I've never ever seen one of those before. <laughs> the Kragers, are they? Yeah, they must be bad to this, they mustn't be, because they're really, really wide. Mm. Mickey Thompson, didn't he do drag racing or something? I've got a feeling. So I'll have to look at the registration number of this one just to see what it is exactly we're looking at. I don't know, is it could be a, a Rio or a White or something like that. I'm not entirely sure, but either way it's a pretty cool thing and it's got living accommodation on the back of it as so many of these lorries do but yeah that's a, there's not much going to stop you once you're rolling along the road in that you 
can have too many bits of wood as well. Defenders on the inside. That's it. <laughs> oh yeah, air defenders, defenders yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't fancy changing those tyres with this. <laughs> They're a bit like the West Coast mirrors we put on Big Dodge. Here's that mighty old. Harley identified this one. Yeah, some lovely badges on there, aren't they? You've got the Butlins Car Club. I like the Triple A. Walt Disney. My the Automobile Club of Michigan, that is pretty cool. Har Harley identified this one as an old from a distance simply because he could see lots and lots of letters across the front of the bonnet or the hood. It's and uh, it, it's very similar. To, exactly it's very similar to the 58. 58 yeah, the 58 exactly Buick. The yeah, it's very, very similar, isn't it? So, this is the Oldsmobile 88. It's a four door, it's a more door. Although from here, from a distance, you'd think it was just a two door really, wouldn't you? That rear fourth door is quite well hidden because there isn't a little quarter light in the back in the back door glass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it does, is it, isn't it? Is it maybe sold as a two door and a four door? I'm not sure. I guess there was a two door as well, yeah. But look at the chrome can you imagine the re-chroming? I was thinking of the, um, the windscreens. Yeah, how, how incredible, isn't it? Look at this. Real sort of Dan Dare, Flash Gordon styling. It's the original, it? Yeah, it's great, isn't it? And again, I don't think we've seen this one anywhere, have we, before? It is a beauty, isn't it? Speed isn't it the Land Rover pulling in? Look at that. Wow, look at that interior. No, no, but you're not down there, but this is, this is a start. There might be a few down there, but this is how it was you. There's the two hot rods that we saw driving in before. Both V8s, of course. Right. So is this an original body that's been chopped? Yeah, or is it I think so. a later copy? I'm not quite sure, but <laughs> the other one's a later copy, but it's just like the surface sort of switches and stuff that's next to it. Yeah. You, you won't be able to wear a top hat in that one, would you? So yeah, this one is uh, This is fiberglass fiber body this I think, isn't it? And I can see a tractor, I can hear a tractor. But it's not coming in, I don't think. It's probably a user, isn't it? What do we have here then? Oh, look at that Bentley. The Derby era Bentley of the 1930s. He's got some lovely cars, this guy, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, wow. we've seen this gentleman before with several cars, a Healy. He's got another Bentley. Another ro he's got a Rolls, hasn't he? He's got a black and red. He's got another Bentley just. He's got a. Anyway. He's got an Austin Healy 100 air. Yes. So, what do you address the car? What a beautifully silent car that is. Yeah. Yeah. What a beauty that is. There's a reminder that the engine of the Corvair is at the other end of the car. There's our little Massey Ferguson 130 we saw driving in before. <laughs> Quite a comfortable seat on these compared to the older grey Fergies, which are just metal. Yeah. Everything looks oiled up and dirty. Yeah. 
and by complete contrast that gorgeous Derby Bentley alongside it We just caught a glimpse of steam from behind the building over there, behind the Jolly Thresher. Just stopped at the traffic lights. So the first of the steam vehicles is here. Interesting to compare it to modern traffic, eh? Here we go. <laughs> Magnificent roller. Wow. That's it. I wonder what time they had to start this morning firing it up, getting the boiler heated up. You can feel it through the ground as it drives past. They're taking the wide line, isn't they? <laughs> Super low geared steering on these, chain ch connected by chains. Yeah, yeah, you had to go at steering one, didn't you? Of course, no one's waiting to let him across. Ooh. The beautiful smell of burning coal as well. A mighty Ford tractor. That is a crack of that, isn't it? Wow. I like tractors that have big tyres on the front. Yeah. Spoilers on the back. Something for everyone here today: cars, tractors, lorries, and steam. Is the other one coming? Oh, here it is. Fantastic. Look at that beautiful Vanguard. And look at the livery trailer on the back as well. That is fantastic. Oh, of course, no one's letting them across as usual. How cool is that? That is beautiful. I love the lamp on the back. There you go. You see the lamp on the back of the trailer hanging off the back? The road mender's lamp, just like yours. Oh, I can see something. One of those lovely old reflective trailer plates on the back as well. Yeah, it's a Kenyan, a Kenyan. A Kenyan Cerulite, that one. Yeah. Is that the same as mine? No, no, with, it's, it's with, got the same lenses with, with, with the knobbly lenses. But it's different. Right. It was a pattern on it, which makes me think. <laughs> So, stunning Foden and two wonderful examples of preserved steam.
And then it stopped and then it kept doing it. So the vehicles park here outside the Jolly Thresher for a while and then they head off down the road to the next pub which yeah, I think is the Wheat Chief. Uh, the Wheat Chief is just a few hundred yards down that away, back down the main road. So I think they head off down there about one o'clock, something like that. And then they stop for another constitutional and then maybe, I don't know, there's also the old number three pub which is a little bit further down the road so whether they head off down there afterwards as well, I'm not quite sure, but it strikes me as being a very, very pleasant way of spending a Boxing Day, especially when the weather is as beautiful as this. Just look at the engineering on this. Made in Broadheath, not far from here. 1923. I'm not quite sure how many years this particular gathering has been taking place. Like I said, the last time we came was 2009 and probably the first time for us was about 2004, something like that. So, yeah, it's great to come back to this one and lovely to see those beautiful steam vehicles over there and we'll, we'll see them hopefully driving off down the road pretty soon. And here is that Jensen we saw before. What a beauty that is. Mighty Chrysler V8 engine under that bonnet. Wonder if it'll come back. That's quite groovy as well, a JCB fast track on an M registration. Roller or traction engine. It's a very, very small traction engine. 2018 plane. <laughs> wow, look at that. That's great, isn't it? What a little cracker that is. An AEC, a bonneted AEC. <laughs> They're coming from all directions. A lovely little international. It's a grey Fergie. I wish you could smell this scene. Isn't it beautiful that Ruston Proctor and Company Limited of Lincoln? Fit in any garage. Maybe if you remove the chimney anyway. There's that classic Kawasaki we saw coming in before, Z650 on an R plate. A 63 plate Harley. And a Honda over here. Just like pause in proceedings, so time for a bit of sustenance. 
is that incredible AEC that we saw driving in before? It's not often you've seen them bonneted. More often than not, these matadors have got the flat fronts introduced, I think, during the Second World War. And many of them saw a second life as timber tractors after World War II once they were demobbed and they carried on for many, many years. I'm guessing thought this one may have been used for at some point. Clearly, it's in heavy haulage configuration now. But what a fantastic gold girl this is. Matador with the oil engine. Yeah, it's definitely a chunky old fella, that one. Ooh, great little VW. So this is probably 1940s in date, and apparently the house behind it, that lovely detached house there, dates to 1939, so it's very in keeping seeing this old lorry parked outside. This could be late 40s, it could be wartime, maybe recabbed possibly. When you think everything has probably arrived, what looms into view, but this amazing recovery vehicle. Isn't that just beautiful? What a wonderful old girl that is. Two classic AECs together. I think I can hear a tractor. Sure saw a Morris Miner, there we go. Quite a late example, 70 or 71, Morris Meyer, the Traveller. Let's have a look at the business end of this magnificent AEC. Danger, overhanging crane. First departure. Make that departures plural. You never see a sort of fancy one of those, do you? No, they're all restored, aren't they? Oh, the bonnet's open on the Corvair flat six. What do we have here? BSA went past before, but sadly I was looking in the wrong direction. But here we have another one. As the mighty automobile blends its way into the traffic. Magnificent V8. That sounded very similar to the pilot, you know. <laughs> very quiet verb. <laughs> There's that beautiful BSA that pulled up just a few minutes ago. That's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yes, it's like a sort of gunmetal metallic, isn't it? Got a bit of green. Yeah. Oh, it's beauty, isn't it? Golden flash. Yeah, right, yeah. It says well, 9, super, miles on it. <laughs> super original, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder if that 9,300 miles is original. It could just be looking at the condition of it, which is just wonderful. Look at that. The remains of the old BSA logo there, the transfer. BSA Birmingham Small Arms, hence the three rifles that make up the symbol, which we can see a bit clearer here. I can see why people collect old motorbikes. Fit loads of them in a garage. That's right. Little and large. The post-war jeep now. It's a post-war jeep, isn't it? Funny front on it though. Yeah, it's a bit loose, isn't it? Yeah. I think the rear exhaust hangers come adrift, I think. Both Jeeps are parked up together now. This is a wartime era Jeep. And then you can see the different fronts on them. And this is probably early 1950s. I've never seen that front, that one. Yeah. It's sort of more domed. I know there's yeah. a really right. like blue one, isn't there? <laughs> Do you know the one I mean? That's a nice hooter. Do you know the blue one I mean? That's sort of just post war, that's got a different. Yeah, one. yeah. This is much more sort of. Yeah, this is sort of 50s. Yeah, it's sort of 1950s ish. Oh, we've got an information board here. Let's have a look. How's that? G Willis Jeep M38. Ooh, we've got a gaggle of tractors coming in as well. Let's go and have a look at those as they come in. We've got a Fordson. The Fordson Power Major. A whole gaggle of tractors. That's an unusual one, isn't it? Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, David Brown. Just as the tractors arrive, it looks like the Chevy Corvairs about to set sail, possibly the same for the Austin 16 as well. And we'll definitely keep an eye out for those going. Beautiful cars. Really great turnout here today. Yeah, the flat six engine in the back here running, burbling away to itself. Sounds so much like a Porsche. Yeah. Mm, we've got some jumper cable action here. Oh, we've got a bit of blurb on the front of the Bentley now, 1934. Oh, the Austin 16's up and running. Quick three-point turn and I think it's going to be heading off. Well, oh, mine's got power. What a great looking car that is. Big brother to the Austin 8 and the Austin 10. Of course the 8s and the 10s were introduced in the late 30s. 
but the Austin 16 had to wait until the post-war years. Can't, can't remember, this is either a 47 or 48, I think, this one. 48. Is it 48, this one? It is. Corvair's off as well. Is that groovy little VW pickup crew cab pickup truck? Yes, that's neat, that isn't it? Left hand drive, actually, at the back, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quite neat, that isn't it? Very high load bay, of course, because the engine is under the back here somewhere, and the JCB is firing up, also yellow. <laughs> Let's watch the fast track go past this great little international harvester and the Fords and Power Major. Yeah, that's another one you won't want to argue with. I've always thought these little David Browns are lovely looking little tractors, so curvy the front and the, the cowl giving you a bit of protection for your knees if you're driving along on a wet day yeah, That's David Brown DB of Aston Martin of course David Brown bought Aston Martin hence the DB prefix to so many of the classic Astons Very festive Land Rover here Wow, look at that, a Sentinel steam wagon. Look at that, built in Shrewsbury. The old Sentinel works is still there in Shrewsbury if you drive down the main road. A few spits and spots of rain in the air now so we're just going to walk down the road down towards the wheat sheaf and go and stand down there to capture the steamers as they head towards us it's just starting to rain properly now great news The bike's just waiting for the others to form up, just the other side of the traffic lights down there. You can see the Foden's waiting to pull out.
Yep, Foden's coming now. The bike's waiting for him. What a great sight. At least they haven't got far to go. <laughs> this one bobs along very nicely. Is that Jeep M88 that we were looking at a few moments ago? Sentinel's just doing a quick three-point turn and then hopefully it'll be heading back this way to pub number two. A little bit more stately compared to the Sentinel. This is where the vehicles are congregating, those that are taking part in the run today, the Wheat Chief Inn. Uh, the Morris Miner's just parking up. <laughs> nice and warm here. Because <laughs> um, there's quite a lot of digging off to do, there's 
probably about 60 odd tonne of stuff. Tractors are all well, mostly gathering just over here. You can hear something heavy taking off. Oh, look at that. And while we're walking down here, admiring these beautiful tractors, I spy what is probably a fairly old garage over here. So let's go and have a quick look, just see if there's any signs of it motoring past. No longer a petrol station, now it's Kids Planet, but clearly this was a garage for many, many years. You can see where the petrol pumps would have been, all now gone. A paste petroleum petrol station, no less. So yeah, so there would have been pumps over here and over here on those concrete plinths. Still got the lights at the top. So this was a paste Yeah, paste petroleum it would have been. Yes. And now it's Nothing. Yes. But yeah, that must have been an oldish garage. I'm guessing it goes back probably to the 30s, I would have thought. Not many signs of its early life left, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, that's the old switch for the pumps. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it's looking a bit second hand this van, isn't it? So what's that then? It's just a VW caddy or something, isn't it? Yeah, sort of polo era, isn't it? Maybe polo base, something like that. Another tractor. <laughs> Well, most of the vehicles that are coming down to the wheat sheaf are now here, the tractors are parked up. So I think we will probably start wrapping up this particular video. Thanks so much for watching. We're heading back via crew, I think, because uh, we're booked in to go and watch the new Ferrari film, which is based on the 1956, 57 rather, sports car season. Going to grab a bit of a bite to eat, head back to crew, watch the Ferrari film, and then head back home. So thanks very much for watching. Please check out the rest of the channel if you're new here, like, subscribe to the channel, that kind of thing, because yep, there'll be plenty more videos just like this coming along throughout next year. What a great day out that was. There we go. Yeah.